this um, session is just to kind of give a description of how business taxes work, right? So, um, most people here are just coming from Nigeria and, you know, they are beginning to have ideas as to, you know, how they want to proceed, you know. And um, most people who, who do business, they somehow take more money home than we that actually work, right? I was discussing with someone who works for IBM. I think he was paid about 80 something thousand and he quit his job, bought a pizza shop in PI and he's, you know, because he knows that even if he's, his sales in a year is maybe 100,000, he will take more home than the 80,000 that he's, he's earning, right? So some people have proceeded to, you know, while they are working, um, have like, you know, side hustle and maybe work is bringing in 60,000, side hustle is bringing in 40,000. Now that 40,000 is your revenue, right? You have to, you know, um, deduct all the expenses, come to um, net profit, add that to your employment income, your T4, and you know, you get, you find your marginal tax rates and you pay your taxes. Um, God bless you, you know, as you're moving, you say, okay, I want to formalize my business, right? Now you say, okay, what are my options? Um, you want to register the business, just have a regular name. If you have just, uh, you, you register the business, you are not protected um, by um, a corporate, um, the legal corporation um, that, that um, like a corporation will offer you, right? Plus, you will not have any tax advantage, so you still be taxed as an individual. Um, but you can deduct most of these um, expenses. Uh, so if you are working from home, you, you have like, uh, you can divide, you, you, know, you know the parts where you, your, maybe your small office is look, um, situated, your desk and all that, where you work from. You can get the square footage and use that as a deduction from your business expense. Vehicle expenses, so most times you advise to keep a log and then, um, you know, write what portion of it is, is um, related to the business. Professional fees. Sometimes it's applicable, maybe if you're an engineer, you're using you know, that expertise to do consulting, you can deduct that as well. Um, this is already touched on here. Advertising for your business, meals and entertainment, usually it's only 50% you can um, deduct to arrive at your profit, meals and entertainment. So if you have like a client you're taking to Starbucks or you know, some people push other things in there, but if you're audited, um, insurance, insurance usually, is, um, not, not including life insurance, um, but most insurance that is business related can be deducted. Startup cost as well, you know, once you are like uh, bootstrapping, you can push those expenses in. Bad debt, interest charges, and taxes. CCA is uh, more of like a capital cost allowance, so like it's just the other side of um, depreciation. So all these expenses can be deducted from your uh, total revenue to arrive at your net profit and then you get taxed. Okay. So by the time you decide that you want to formalize your business, um, we've talked about um, the business name registration. I, I, I think you can do that at uh, Service Nova Scotia or Access Nova Scotia, one of them, and then you know you just they'll do like a name search and then you have a business name. So you can now trade under that name. But like I said, you're not a co corporation, right? So the next other, uh, but you have these deductions that I mentioned earlier available to you. There's no preferential tax rate and there's no legal um, protection. So if anything happens, they're going to go after you like, you know, they are, they are going after you, not a business. So but once you decide that you want to incorporate, now all these same deductions are available. Now you have a prefer preferential tax rate. So, um, in Nova Scotia, the total you pay for taxes is 13%, right? So the federal um, tax rate is going to be 10. I'll come, I'll tell you how, how that number is arrived at. But your, your tax rate is going to be 10, while the uh, Nova Scotia tax rate is going to be 3%. So add that together, it's going to be 13% versus when you are taxed as um, small business that is not a corporation or as an individual. Um, also, you have legal protection, you know, so they, they can go after your business to the extent that they can, but they can't go 
after you. So there are many ways that you could shield some of those assets so that they can't go after those assets when they move out of the corporation, right? So, you know, um, when you think about it, you know, um, let's say you are a doctor and you're earning $300,000 or you're an engineer, you're earning $300,000 as, let me use a random name, um, Femi, you know, you will be paying about 54% in taxes. Yeah, but once you move it down here, your corporation will be paying 13% because you've not reached a threshold of um, $500,000. One thing I want everyone to be aware of here is that it is tax deferral. So the fact that your corporation is paying 13% do, does not mean that it's just a way of keeping the money inside. But the moment the money moves out to you, all those taxes that, that was not paid gets paid. So, so, but keeping it inside helps you to use the money over and over again to do stuff. But the moment you want to move the money out, then you have to think of smart ways to pay yourself that money where you have the best you optimize the taxes as much as possible. So once you want to uh, from, um, go in, incorporate the business, you have two options. You can incorporate provincially or federally, right? Uh, federal just gives you, you know, wider rights to carry on a business. So for instance, if you are operating as, um, you know, um, Tesco, you know, and there's, there's a Tesco in New Brunswick, but you registered federally, you can still use that Tesco name. So let's say the, tes the Tesco in New Brunswick was registered provincially in New Brunswick, and you are in, in Nova Scotia, but you registered federally, you can still use that Tesco name there, regardless of the person there you registered as, um, yeah. yeah. So, so that's the, the, like, when you register federally, it gives you, it supersedes the provincial one. Plus, they do some kind of, like, cross, um, provincial, extra provincial, check, whatever, before, yeah. And then you can use the name Canada, you know. When you say Tesco Canada Limited, you know, you can use that. So it gives you kind of like more, what we call a fizzy, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. um, but you, you require, you know, annual filing, you know. So there's more administrative work on the federal side than on the provincial side um, to, to some extent. So a lot of like um, companies that sell things online because you may be selling to Nova Scotia, you may be selling to to Alberta, all that. Sometimes you know federal uh, incorporation is better, but always talk to a lawyer when you want to decide which one is best. So by the time you're doing your business and you know it's going well, you've already registered the business name, but you've not incorporated. By the time you decide that you want to incorporate your business, it means that that business is closing. And you want to, it's kind of like they're seeing it as you are selling the business to your corporation. You understand? And once you do that, there's a capital gain that comes, that becomes due. So in order to avoid that, you have to file uh, Section 85 rollover, which means that you are selling that um, private business or that um, self-employed business to the corporation. And then you're going to have to take you know, some compensation in form of like shares, even if it's just one share. Because if you don't do it that way, and maybe down the road, they're auditing you and they see, okay, um, this business when it started was maybe $20,000, but it kind of grew to $60,000, and then you now moved into the corporation, that uh, $40,000 can be taxed because it's capital gain. So it, it, people don't really know about this, and it may not come up, but it's legally required by CRA to do this, right? So it's Section 85 rollover. And not you can do partial rollover so that certain, as certain things will be taxed and certain things will not be taxed, so you could do a full one. And it's not all the items in your balance sheet that, uh, I, think, I think it's accounts receivable or maybe inventory. One of them has to be filed with something else, not um, Section 85. So now I want to go into the benefits of incorporation, right? So now we talked about 54% of personal income, right? But um, so um, both federal and um, provi provincial, they have like a, a limit where you can operate under 500,000, right? So if 
your your net income is five hundred thousand, the federal government is going to give you um, a small business deduction, and before that, there are certain things they call abatements that comes before that. So you arrive at ten percent, and then provincially, Nova Scotia. I, I always use Nova Scotia because this is where we are. Uh, there's an upper limit of, um, I think, 16% and a lower limit of t um, 3%. So once you are operating under this $500,000 as your net income, the tax on the provincial side will be 3%. And then when you add that to the 10%, because you are operating under $500,000 net income, which is 10%, you add both of them, you'll be arriving at 13%. So the basic tax rate on a federal corporation is 38%. Um, now, that 38%, there's a 10% abatement that brings you down to 28%. And then there's a, um, if, you are, if you are a small business under 500,000, then they give you a small business de deduction that moves everything down to 10%. So that's how I arrive. Is that clear to any, or anybody has any question about the, the rates? No? Okay. Now, this is available to everybody except people who have a personal service corporation. Now, personal service corporation is when someone says, OK, um, I'm an engineer. I'm employed by Bell Alliance. And I'm earning $100,000. But it seems like I'm paying too much tax. So I want to incorporate the business and now use the business to get the job with Bell Alliance so that I will invoice Bell Alliance with my company, then they pay me, and then I'll pay myself. Some, some, some people, um, let's say you're getting a job through maybe Manpower, for instance. Manpower will say they don't want to handle your CPP issues. They don't want to handle your EI and all those things. So the best thing, just incorporate your company, and then we'll get you the job. You know, a lot of IT consultants fall into this category. So they now say, you know, so, so basically looking at it this way, if the corporation you formed did not exist, would you be an employee? That's the kind of the, the way to look at it. So if CRA reassesses you when you do all that kind of stuff, because normally you have your, your corporation, you, have, you paid HST because you invoiced, right? And then now all that revenue, you, you, you made deductions from, from the, the, the profit of the, um, that you made from your your, your, your sales. Now you are being taxed at 13%. Now you now pay yourself salary. If CRA reassesses you, they'll move you to 54%. So you need to be careful. So all those deductions will also be disallowed. So let's say you put rent because you're using part of your, your house, you're you are driving, you're doing all those things. They'll all add it back and they'll tax you at 54%. So we need to be careful. But we'll go back into that. Um, now, um, even though we are paying 13%, like I said earlier, that 13% is just tax deferral. When you decide that you want to pay yourself the salary or dividend or bonus, you pay the remaining difference. So we just need to be careful. Uh, so once um, you have a, a corporation, now you want to decide how are you going to pay yourself or all the other directors, right? There's the option of bonus, the option of dividends, the option of salary. Now these two want to, they go to form part of your, um, they show, it, it gives um, CRA um, the, okay, okay. So bonus and salaries, they form what's going to be part of your RSP contribution room, right? Dividend doesn't. So if you want to go like mortgage and all those kind of things, you want to show proof that you're earning money. It's best you pay yourself with these two, right? Um, and these two are already um, taxed um, from your income statement, while this one is not taxed. Also, you want to plan very well. If your year end is um, 2018 December, you can declare a bonus and not actually pay it. So you can declare the bonus, deduct it from your um, your income statement and paid sometime in June. So it's kind of like you can, you can reduce how much is taxable, but not actually pay the money until June, right? Okay. 
Yeah, so I was talking about um, how even though there are, there are these three methods of paying yourself, but there's no real tax advantage in paying one over the other because somehow CRA has planned it such a way that whether you pay bonus, dividend, salary, you end up coming at the same tax. You know, so it's more of maybe a timing issue like the bonus that I mentioned or or having it form part of your having it form part of your RSP contribution room. Other than that, there's no um, benefit per se, and all of this is just on um, income of um, that is net income of 500k. Uh, so far, is there any question? 500k and below of value of pay and So 500k. So the small business deduction is available to net income of 500k and below. Yeah. So, and small business deduction is a federal government kind of like um, scheme. It's not applicable to the province. Provinces just have a lower um, rate and an upper rate. The personal service corporation. So um, they are the most, this particular group, they are the most audited group. You know, and especially like in Ottawa, where the federal government employs a lot of IT consultants. So when those IT consultants, they want to get a job, the recruitment agency know that dealing with all this small, small paperwork and all that kind of stuff is too cumbersome for them. They probably need to hire somebody. So they want to push the work to you as the individual. They now say force you to go incorporate. And now when you incorporate, you want to take advantage of the 13% in Ottawa, I think is about, I mean in Toronto. Ontario, I think it's like maybe 15% because their own um, rate is higher than the 3% lower distance of Nova Scotia. So you want to take advantage of that. You've done all your deductions and all that. Now they assess, they've hired more people to kind of like reassess people and then they just bump you up to 54% and then you pay more taxes than you should pay. So, um, But there are ways to plan around um, not being assessed as a... Um, personal service incorporation, uh, corporation, and part of it is like you have to advertise your, your business. So if you're an IT person, you, you know, have Instagram, Facebook, Kijiji, advertise your business, you, um, try and um, own your own tools. So if you are working in somebody's office, you know, it's best use your own computer, use your own tools and all that. So CRA will see that, you know, you are actually working independently and you're not em really employed by that organization. Um, you can have more than four or five employees working for you, you know, and do work for more than one company, you know. And then have a invoice the, the client and have a contract that states the relationship you guys have. So, yep. This was really fast. This is all I could prepare. Um, I know it's quite short, but if you have any questions.